and we'll begin in just about five seconds. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and begin. So uh, welcome to our live webinar. My name is Nicola Pomponio. Uh, we're so excited to travel to the beautiful town of Samour, France today. And uh, we're with the cellar master of Gracin and Meyer, uh, Pierre Charon, and Olivia Dupre, our director of Champagne Alfred Gracien and Gracien and Meyer. Uh, great to see you both. Welcome, thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Olivia, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so uh, hello everybody. Very happy to be there today. I prefer to be on the field with you guys, but uh, it's better than nothing. I joined the group 22 years ago, and uh, before that I was working in the Loire Valley for 13 years, so I am more than 35 years in the wine business. I'm currently the managing director of the Frexenet Gracien operation, but much more important for today is that I was born and raised in Saumur, so I am a local, and a Gracien here is really, really in my heart, and I will try to, to make it closer to you today. Wonderful, Pierre. Hello, everyone. Um, great to be here. Uh, so I'm Pierre. I'm 41 years old. I've been uh, making wine for 18 years now. Uh, I've been uh, doing some winemaking in France and abroad. Uh, I've been to New Zealand, Australia, Chile, Switzerland, and, and different regions in France, uh, south of France, uh, Rhone Valley. Uh, I've never do. I've been doing winemaking in Champagne, but I discovered the art of um, of uh, sparkling wine in uh, in Saumur. So I I came to Saumur in 2013, uh, working for another company uh, called Ackerman, uh, and then I joined uh, Gracia Miller. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I just wanted to say welcome, an official welcome to you, Pierre, to the FXM USA team. We might have lost Pierre there for a second, but he'll be back. Um, I understand, uh, Pierre, are you are you there or did we lose him? I believe Olivier, right? Uh, Pierre is there. I think we might he might have dropped out. So why don't we do this? We were going to talk to Pierre about his experience, but uh, we're going to wait for him to pop back on. And while we're waiting for him to pop back on, Olivier, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, the chatter right now that's going on with uh, the Cremants being the rising sparkling wine of France, especially probably due to our economic market conditions. Can you, do you think that's true? And maybe you can take a few minutes to uh, talk about that? For sure. Um, let's say, I think a little bit of history, you remember the big boom of, uh, of the Prosecco in the US and throughout the world. And the very big, uh, one of the very big reason for the big boom on Prosecco, it was targeting a customer that we are not used to have in the sparkling wine business. It was targeting young lady between 20 and 30 years old. Uh, today, the one that were 20 now, they are, at that time they were they are 30, and the one that were 30, they are 40. And uh, when you get older, uh, you have to have something different to drink. And uh, Prosecco is a very nice sparkling, very delicate. But there is, uh, compared to Cremant, Cremant is much more sophisticated, much more complex. And I think that people, after having drinking Prosecco 10 years, they might want to see something and to, to check and taste something different. And Cremant is perfect. Cremant is price line with Prosecco. Cremant is, uh, is, uh, is uh, much more affordable than, than Champagne, although it's made really like Champagne. So it's a, it's a little Champagne that we offer little in terms of uh, reputation, but as high as champagne in terms of quality. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And I believe uh, Pierre is back online as well, which is nice. Hi, Pierre. We lost you for am, just a second. I am so sorry about that. It happens <laughs> I don't know all what the happened. time. We're always, uh, we're always ready for these technical glitches. We've been doing this for a few years. So what we did is we went ahead and moved on with a, a little bit of uh, Olivier's section. And now we can scroll right back to uh, talking to you. But I don't know if you heard me say this to you, but I just wanted to welcome you to uh, the FXM USA team. And uh, we're just really excited to have you on this call today. Uh, I understand you grew up right in the Loire Valley, um, but you had, like you mentioned, you had some wine education abroad in New Zealand and Australia. What drew you back to France? Um, basically, France is a wonderful country, of course. Uh, plenty of things to discover, plenty of uh, good food, good wines. But um, I also learned a lot uh, doing some winemaking abroad. 
because uh, in other countries uh, there is a, um, uh, an open-minded spirit that you don't often find in France, uh, especially when you want to to share techniques uh, of winemaking, of uh, knowledge about the terroir. I I uh, learned more uh, abroad because the people were more uh, with a sharing attitude than in France, where people can be uh, sometimes very uh, uh, a bit uh, more um, uh, close to the to to the to the new people. Uh, so that's really what uh, yeah uh, what brings me back in France is because they yeah my. Obviously, my my family, my uh, my my life is in France, but I really enjoy the 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 experiences that I had, I had in the, abroad. Beautiful. And, uh, where, where exactly is where exactly is uh, Gracia de Meyer? Can you tell us? I believe uh, Rachel put the map up there for us. Yep, uh, Gracia de Meyer is in Saumur. Uh, Saumur is just by the Loire. Uh, through this window, I can see the perfectly the Loire because Gracia de Meyer is on the on the hillside of uh, Chalk, uh, we call the, um, the the soil here the tufo. Yeah, and, uh, the, turn your camera, Pierre. If the weather is nice, turn your camera. Show you think so? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Let's take a look. Outside. Let's take a look. Yeah, well, that's beautiful. That. There's the Loire. There's the yeah. There it is. Beautiful. Nice okay. to be able to see live. We did that with uh, with um, Nicolas JJ. He showed us his vineyards. <laughs> okay. But go ahead, please tell keep keep uh, please tell us. So the uh, the the, the summer is located on the same chalk vein of uh, of uh, of the than the than of Champagne and Paris, because uh, you see Paris is a uh, it's a lot of chalk beneath uh, the soil, and this is go to Champagne and to the Loire. Uh, it's, and the, it ends exactly in uh, in Saumur. So uh, Garcia Meyer started. Uh, I mean, the the local wine industry in Saumur is uh, 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 in the 19th century started to make sparkling wine here because there were there were these uh, big caves that were used to to make construction. So they they were extracting uh, the um, extracting the the stones uh, from the from the soil in the middle age to build all the building of Sommer. there is a lot of old and nice buildings so this is a very white stones and uh, then there were these uh, huge caves that could be used to store to to store some wines and uh, the people from the champagne especially uh, and uh, uh, Alfred Gracien in, uh, in our case, uh, they wanted to develop the, the champagne method uh, in Saumur because they, the, the region had the same characteristic of soil that in Champagne. So they actually utilized the white bricks not only for building the buildings, but uh, it also turned, it turned, they utilized them the, for caves because they were extracting and utilizing for caves. Exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. The, the, the caves were created for centuries. So our caves are very, very, very old. We don't really know when they were uh, built uh, because it started from the maybe the 12th centuries. Oh wow! Uh, uh, and it it was a very uh, continuous um, uh, process uh, along along the year. People just uh, extra were extracting stones where when they needed. Uh, but yeah. in, in because uh, you know I am from Saumur, so I know the history of the cellar quite well. And uh, if you are in Saumur, we are less than a kilometer away from the castle, and we are on the same level as the castle. So Gracia Meyer cellar was dug to extract stone to build the castle of Saumur. Oh, okay. Okay, there you go. You can see those that center top picture. You can really see the white uh, stone or the white tifo, uh That's that's in you know part of those caves, and that's what they use, right? Olivier to build uh, to build it. Wonderful. Well, go ahead. Tell us a little bit about um, the the soil and maybe even a little bit about the sustainable practices at the winery. Yeah. yeah so this soil is very good to make sparkling wine because the the vines uh, can 
always have some uh, humidity in this this kind of soils. It's it's never dry, so the the grapes can ripen uh, very slowly during the summer, and uh, then it's never too hot. Uh, so the it gives a lot of um, of a fineness in the wine, and uh, that's really what we need to make a good sparkling wine. Uh, with a good acidity, with our variety, main variety that called the Chenin and also the Chardonnay. We also own the 80 hectares of uh, vineyard uh, since a few years now, and uh, we have extended it uh, this summer. Uh, this vineyard really helped us to get the best fruit, uh, to do the winemaking we want, to have the best juice for our wines. Uh, and uh, we we tend toward uh, uh, an organic practice because we really care about how the the grapes are produced. Um, so we try to reduce uh, all the all the chemicals uh, we can. Uh, we do a lot of uh, hand uh, uh, hand work, um, and. Um, so that's a very very thrilling experience to to have uh, to 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 do everything from the grapes to the to the bottling because the the sparkling wine is a very long process uh, but uh, when you can see uh, the beginning until the very end that's why this well my job is very very interesting from this point of view is that's that I can happen. can see really the the results so the good work in the vineyard I, I can see it. Uh, step by step. Mm. Wonderful. Uh, um, can you tell us a little bit about the rules of uh, the Cremant? Yeah, the rules of the Cremant are basically the rules of the Champagne, uh, meaning that the um, uh, hand picking is mandat mandatory. So you, you can't use a uh, machine to harvest. And this is very, very important for quality. Uh, because, as I said, you need a very uh, fine and uh, subtle wine to make good sparkling wine. And when you, you when you use a, a machine, you do too much extraction from the from the skins of the of the of the of the berries. You really want the the very juice of the berry. You don't want to extract too much from the skin, and only the hand pick can assure this. Um, also, there is a, a time of aging of uh, eight months on its lease. So all our wine, uh, they stay at least eight, uh, nine months, sorry, nine months yeah. in the in the cellar. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 12 months, Cremant. It's 12 months, Cremant de Loire, at least on the yeast. Yes, it's, it's, it's 12 months, but uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's more complicated than that. Uh, but let's say 12 months, let's say a year. But anyway, our wine in uh, Gracia Meyer, they all make more than 12 months because uh, the lease aging is very uh, important for us and uh, give all the structure and the, the fattiness of the wine that uh, you, you acquire it um, in the cellar. Um, what did I miss uh, about well, the, the pressing? Uh, the pressing for the Clermont de Loire, you can't press too much the grapes also. You only use the best juice of the grapes. So that's, that's like the first press. What, um, mm. so Gracian and Meyer actually spends, I know we're, we're going to get into this a little bit deeper in, in when we're tasting the wines, but obviously Gracian and Meyer is spending um, much more time on the leaves, but we'll go with that, we'll go, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, into that in just a few minutes. So um, tell us a little bit about how we achieve the rosé color on the rosé. Okay, for the rosé color for the Crémant de Loire, uh, unlike Champagne, we can't use uh, red wine to, to do the color because in the, in the Champagne, they have this uh, uh, tradition to, to make uh, red wine from uh, Pinot Noir grapes and use this red wine to color the, the rosé wine. Uh, we can do that in... Um, we, in the Loire Valley, uh, we use uh, the the red grape variety, and uh, we're gonna use more the the second press of the red grapes to have this little extraction of the color of the skin. So it's it's called um, uh, 
pressurage direct, so direct press. Uh, it's not uh, it's not the Senier method from a red uh, red uh, tank. Thank you. What what uh, can you give us a couple points about what makes sparkling wines from the Loire different from other regions? Um, the the main difference, uh, well, there is a lot of difference, but the main difference is the variety. We have the Chenin Blanc and the Cabernet Franc, uh, which is different from the other uh, region. And uh, we also have uh, the, this uh, oceanic climate, which is very, uh, um, uh, how do you say that? Uh, uh, it, sorry, Olivier. It's mild, a uh, mild climate. It's never too hot. Yeah. It's never exactly. Yeah, it's, it's never too hot. Never too, never too, never too cold. Because, for example, in Champagne, the winter is very cold, and summer can be very hot. In the in the Loire Valley, it's it's always uh, warmer in winter and uh, cooler in the in the summer. Wonderful. So this this have of course uh, uh, an impact on the on the grapes on the wine. Let's uh, let's jump into the tasting. So um, let's. I believe we have both wines for us to taste today. So please uh, take us through them. Yeah, looks looks like he's going to yeah. open it up fresh, and we're going to go start with. Uh, you're going to tell us a little bit about the harvest, a little bit about the blend, and then also the time on the lees and the benefits of the lees. So go ahead. Yeah. So <clears throat> I start with the bridge, which is a blend uh, uh, with a uh, Chenin Blanc. Uh, Chardonnay and uh, Pinot Noir. So it's a non-vintage. Uh, the 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 trick is to try to to make the to to do the same style every year. So I can use some uh, reserve wine, meaning wine from the from the past vintage. Exactly uh, like we will do in Champagne. So the color is quite, uh, it's a very quite bright wine, a very, um, some hint of yellow. On the nose, it's very, uh, it's a lot of fruit, uh, uh, yellow fruit. Uh, basically, you can really smell the Chardonnay. There is there are some uh, some citrus aromas from the Chenin Blanc. In the mouth is very delicate. You see the the effect of the lee aging in the mouth. It's very it's all this um, this fattiness uh, in the mouth that really makes the bubble just very gentle. If uh, you don't wait enough. The wine on it least the bubble can be quite aggressive, and this is not something we want to do. It's uh, it's all the contrary. Um, now it's a very very nice wine, um, very uh, uh, very fine, very long, a lot of length uh, in the mouth. Am I the only one to taste? Now Olivier is tasting too. Of course. Olivia is tasting too, and some of the people uh, in California with their uh, with their oatmeal and their their eggs and bacon are tasting it with their breakfast. <laughs> that, that should be a, a perfect match. Exactly, exactly. Wonderful. And tell us a little bit about the uh, rosé. Yeah, so the rosé, uh, like I said, the color rosé is uh, obtained thanks to the Pinot Noir on the Cabernet Franc which are red grapes. And there is also some Chardonnay and some Chenin. Um, I tend to be, a, I, th I think the rosé wine needs a little less of lease aging, but it's also important. I would say maybe six months less or eight months less is good for rosé wine. So we can, the, 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 the freshness of the fruit, So the color is very pale. <clears throat> so this is why, uh, like I like I explained to you, the 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 direct press method. So you don't get uh, a lot of color with this method, and um, it's also very bright. 
It's very also fine and delicate with more flor floral notes. There is some uh, some heat on of uh, strawberry, so this is typical Cabernet Franc, the strawberry. It's a bit wonder because the the red varieties they are naturally naturally less acidic than the white variety. So the wine is a bit uh, a bit uh, it's a bit wider, a bit warmer a bit uh, rounder because of this uh, characteristic. Um, I don't know, I, I, I heard that uh, the US market was uh, really um, on the rosé color, right? Yeah, they really uh, enjoy the rosé. Whenever I bring out the wines, uh, people tend to lean towards the rosé because of just how Rosé is is a hot uh, item currently, but I I lean towards the brut. I just I just I love the wine, the the Chenin Blanc, the way the Chenin Blanc, uh, you know, drives uh, different different notes into the wine. Actually, Pierre, I'd love to hear it from your. Can you tell us in like thirty seconds to a minute how Chenin Blanc affects both wines because it's a great conversation point for our sales team. Uh, Chenin Blanc is very the really the backbones of the wine. It 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 has a, the more acidity, so it really is gonna give this uh, uh, this crisp and uh, long finish uh, about the wine. <clears throat> Wonderful. Well, that's great. Thank you for your insight on the two wines, uh, Olivier. What would you pair with uh, these wines with the Brut, and what would you like to pair with the Rosé so that we can let our team know? And team, if you do have any questions, please go ahead and put them into the chat. We have a couple minutes extra. We can ask uh, Pierre or Olivier any questions that you may have. But go ahead, Olivier. Yes, for us, it's perfect time because we are close to dinner. So uh, the Cremant Blanc, what would you think about uh, just snack scallops? Just snack scallops on their, on their own, nothing on top, just the Cremant. Uh, I could imagine also a white fish tartar, a nice sea bass tartar. Uh, leave it with green apple, you know, and the nice acidity of the white would balance the the the, the creaminess and the, the 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 nice texture of the tartare. Uh, in a couple of months, we will have the asparagus season. Asparagus and cremant, it's a perfect match. You don't, and you can grill them even on the barbecue and with a nice hollandaise sauce or with poached. This would be my recommendation for the white. For the rosé, for the rosé, uh, I have a. I, I, I am a bad fisherman, but I like to eat fish. So uh, a grilled prawn, grilled prawn and red pepper. That would be a perfect match with our rosé. Uh, if you like dessert and mostly the most of the dessert, they do not suit or they do not pair very well with, with uh, wine or sparkling. But a nice strawberry tart with very little sugar would be a perfect match on this. And uh, you are most of you, uh, most of the team in the US are Italian people. So what about the bruschetta? with some uh, mozzarella and, and tomato. That would be also nice. That would be also nice. But try, I saw uh, Cremant and, and, and asparagus. Grill the asparagus on the barbecue and try with the Cremant. And you, you call me back and let me know what you, what you think of it. I'm either yeah. going to go to the bistro tonight or I'm actually going to uh, you know, fire up my grill and uh, make sure I, I try that, uh, that asparagus with the uh, Brut because that sounds really, really delicious. <laughs> well, let me take a look at the chat here to see if there's any questions. Oh, someone said, how about oysters? Uh, oysters, of course. Uh, oysters and sparkling wine, especially sparkler, sparklers from our wineries, always go very well, right, Olivier? Uh, yes, but in there, because we have a little bit less acidity in Champagne, and I prefer the nice acidity with the oysters, so I make a, a bad thing. I would recommend better a nice Blanc de Blanc Alfred Gracien or a nice Brut Alfred Gracien with there the oysters. There you go. Had, had to throw that one in, and we we love it because it's part of our portfolio. So, uh, looks like there aren't any uh, questions. Uh, oh, here's one more note. Anita mentioned it goes really well with baseball because um, the San Francisco Giants baseball team goes through a lot of the brut, so that's really nice. It looks like it goes goes really well with the food that's uh, that's sold at the baseball game. And I'm not even going to begin telling you what uh, what they're selling there, but uh, the buyer loves the brut, so that's really nice to see. 
I want to thank you both, Pierre and Olivier, so much for uh, all the amazing insights that you gave us about Grosjean and Meyer, all the details that you gave us re regarding the Cremont Appalachian, and uh, just for the time you were able to spend with us today. So, uh, team, I want to reiterate the importance of Grosjean and Meyer as part of our artisanal collection. We have amazing quality. We have an amazing uh, winemaking team here on screen. Uh, amazing quality, amazing pricing. It's a third of the price of a, a bottle of champagne. Great packaging. It's a really a no-brainer. So let's make sure we get out and uh, bring this wine to our customers. And uh, let's do really well with it in 2024. Olivier, Pierre, I'm going to hand it back to you for uh, an invitation possibly to uh, the winery. And uh, once again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Pierre, go ahead and begin. And Olivier can finish. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it was a it was a, a new um, a new experience for me. Uh, I, I I'm sure I'm willing to do this again. So don't hesitate to, to call me to looking forward to to do this again. And uh, yeah, I hope you sell a lot of uh, Cremant de Loire Grasamia because it's really it's really good wine. Thank you so much, Olivier. I think the best pierre for you would be to go to the US and work with these people to better explain and make them uh, love by heart uh, your, what you are doing here. Uh, for, of course, I would love to welcome you in Saumur, all of you. Uh, I think once you would visit uh, the company, you would felt in love as much as I did when I joined the company. And uh, so uh, thank you for all your efforts. Thank you for attending this, this, uh, this webinar and uh, look forward to seeing you and to cheers uh, in reality. Cheers. Thank yes. you, Pierre. Thank you, Olivier. Thank you, team, for joining us. And this will be posted on YouTube uh, soon. So um, merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. For all the Italians, grazie. <laughs> Ciao. Au revoir. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.